mucus free. We are 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 mucus free. What's going on, brothers and sisters? Welcome to the Mucus Free Life podcast. And I am truly excited about today's episode. We have one of the premier greatest jazz trombone players of all time, Robin Eubanks, is on the program today. A few weeks ago, you saw I did the podcast, was talking about John Coltrane's music and spirituality and that whole frame of mind and reference and things pertaining to that I don't always talk about on this channel because often we're talking about the mucusless diet healing system by Professor Arnold Eric. But those of you that have been around a whole long time know that I'm a jazz musician and we started off promoting the mucus's diet healing system with a band called the breatharian ensemble me and my partner mr brother air we started using music as a way to try to bring this message to the world that eating fruits and green leafy vegetables is rational that eating dead animal flesh is not that great of an idea and of course, you know, fasting is the omnipotent method of healing for humans, for animal life in general. And so we had Breatharian Ensemble. But uh, over the years, and uh, we actually got back together last year for uh, after 10 years we hadn't played. And we, we got back together at the uh, Eret Day celebration last year. And I haven't released much of that footage yet, but I, I will eventually. But uh, that was a lot of fun doing that. But so today we have robin on the program so we're going to get really really deep into some discussion about music tie it into physiology spirituality all of that good stuff but real quick couple announcements so first and foremost there is a link down there we got a spring sale going right now we have the ultimate mucus free life book bundle 10 percent off spring sale 2024 type that in at checkout and get all of the books the last time before i raise the price because with inflation and all that good stuff i'm gonna have to do what i gotta do but right now i want you all to get it if you already have the bundle of course you can it's the perfect gift get it for your loved ones friends and family all that good stuff then uh, also have a replay of my free training coming up on Tuesday. This time it's six o'clock by popular demand. I'll put that in the chat as well. And, uh, and this is an opportunity to see this particular training session live. And uh, I got the Q and A session and all that good stuff at the end. So you can come ask me your questions and uh, have a quick little coaching session there uh, after we get into how uh, you know eating the foods real or myth eating these foods can end your fatigue and bloating of course we get into much more than just that so that's going to be tuesday at six o'clock eastern time right here so click the link and get into that now if you're watching from facebook i'll put the link in here if you want to comment and have your name shown you have to give permissions through this link on facebook so do that if you would like your name to be shown so without further ado we're joined today by mr robin eubanks widely regarded as the premier jazz trombonist of his generation born into a musical family with his brother kevin eubanks former musical director For the Tonight Show, Robin's profound musical journey began at the age of eight after graduating cum laude from the University of the Arts in Philadelphia. Robin moved to New York, where he launched a remarkable career featuring collaborations with jazz legends such as Art Blakey, Elvin Jones, Rolling Stones, Sun Ra, 
so on and so forth, many others. Robin's commitment to jazz extends beyond performance. He spent two decades teaching at Oberlin College Conservatory, where he was a tenured professor of jazz trombone and jazz composition and has been a pivotal figure in jazz education across the globe. His innovative compositions, which blend a variety of jazz styles, has earned him multiple Grammy awards and top honors in jazz polls. Today, we delve into his insights on music, spirituality, and the power of sound and vibration. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Robin Eubanks. What is going on? How you doing, Professor Spira? So nice to join you again. Good to see you again. Yeah, good to see you. So, man, let's let's get into it. So, it's, I want to jump jump right in to the idea of sound and vibration and the power of sound and vibration. And so, you describe music, different kinds of music, as having its own weight and influence on rhythm. So could you elaborate on how you perceive the power of sound and vibration in creating emotional and spiritual responses in, I'd say humans, but in humans and animals and plants and, and all the beings of the earth? <laughs> wow, okay, you are starting off jumping right <laughs> in. <laughs> know how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. Um, no, you know, everything's in vibration. You know, this, this, my chair I'm sitting in is in vibration. Everything, everything in the universe is in vibration. And um, so, you know, we're just a, all just a part of it. You just try to get in rhythm with it and, um, and tr try to use uh, when, when you're really a part of it, and become one with it, then you can exert some degree of influence upon it. And so you, uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Buddhist and I've been a Buddhist for like 40 years, 41 years next month on May 31st. And um, a few days ago was Buster Williams' birthday and he had, had somebody put a post up about Buster and I wrote on it because the, the first Buddhist meeting I ever went to was at Buster Williams' home. Mm -hmm. And when I went there, uh, another trombonist named Steve Ture, great trombonist, who I know you're familiar with, mm -hmm. um, had told me about it. And this girl that I met was, was telling me about it. And I said, what is this stuff? I never heard of it before. And, and I said, let me go check it out and see what it is. And um, so I was doing it. And um, uh, when I went to the meeting, everybody's chant was chanting, which is ch basically chanting this this phrase "Nam Myoho Renge Kyo," and um, and everybody had a different note, so it was a different pitch, I should say. Mm. And um, so I was, and then in this rhythm, like this nam yo ho ren ge gan yo ho ren ge gan yo ho ren ge gan so it's like this kind of six eight kind of rhythm and then their prayers go to five four and, and every so i was hearing this harmony or some kind of tonality and this rhythm so to me it sounded like music mm. so i was like i was down right away and i heard some of the philosophy and it's talking about um uh, fusion with the mystic law of cause and effect through sound and vibration and living your life. And, and it, it just uh, resonated with me immediately. And I've been doing it for 40 years. So for me, everything is, is uh, sound and vibration and, and, and how we interact with that and, and use that in, in our lives for, you know, for whatever we want to do, hopefully good. <laughs> and, yeah. uh, but, you know, they can use sound and vibrations in, in negative ways too. You were, you were relating a story to me earlier about mm -hmm. noise yeah. and stuff. So, so sound and vibra vibration is, is everything, you know? So, so it's, I mean, that's maybe a kind of general kind of response, but uh, it, it definitely touches on the, on the, the main um, 
the main components of, of how I feel about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, so how do you, when you're creating your compositions or playing, you know, how, how do you harness, think about the way you harness the sound and vibration? Um, like a lot of times I'm in my home music studio now, you see my mics and you know, computers and screens and trombones and all kinds of stuff everywhere. But um, I, a lot of times I, I'm just, I'm just hearing stuff. I, I hear, I hear stuff all the time. I'm always, I'm hearing music and sometimes I'm, I feel a, a, a particular muse or moment may hit. And I, I'll hear a rhythm or it might be something I hear on on TV or commercial or, or whatever, or on a radio or, or just walking down the street, hearing some birds or something, who knows mm -hmm. where it comes from. But, um, and I'll just hear something and and, I, and now, uh, fortunately with, with the, the modern technology with smartphones, I can just put on my recorder and I just sing it into my phone mm. i have on, on my phone i have tons of, of stuff on here that i i just i just sing you can see all all of these yeah like, yeah going back like 10 wow. years <laughs> just little fragments of stuff yeah i'm hearing and i sing it into there and you know and i listen to it back sometime when i get a moment and i, I listen to some of it back in my um when I'm home or if I'm on the road or whatever, and uh, and I may, I may hear another something else that fits with what I'm listening to, which could have been a fragment I recorded uh, through two years ago, and and then I get I hear put this together. It's very organic for me, mm -hmm. and then I, I may put it in a. I set it up in a loop on my computer so it's playing over and over again and i sing some more stuff on top of that whatever i'm feeling i hear a rhythm against a rhythm and a, a vibe against a vibe and <laughs> yeah together sometimes i'll just have the loop playing and i'll play my horn with it or i'll just it's easier for me to just sing stuff sometimes because mm. it's, it's just more immediate i don't have to worry about if i can play it or not or it just comes out but then sometimes I just like playing with, along with it. And a lot of it may be awful, but all I need is a, one phrase, really, can, mm -hmm. can, can um, jumpstart a whole composition and a whole section of a composition. And it's, it's you know, if, it's a wonderful feeling for me, especially when, when, the, when it starts flowing, you can do mm -hmm. a, a, whole, a whole song. The, the, the problem for me comes is that when I'm singing it and I'm hearing all the stuff, I'm hearing all the parts in my head mm -hmm. at the same time, basically, but I can only sing one at a time. So when I play it back, I'm just hearing this one thing. Right, right. <laughs> it's right. hard to hear what I was hearing, the counter line I was hearing and the, what yeah. I was hearing, the drums and the harmony and everything. So it's hard to replicate. But in the moment, it feels really complete and complete and whole. And I wish I could just capture mm. everything that I'm hearing at that moment. But I'm, I'm not there yet, but I'm mm. working on it. <laughs> now, do you so do you write this down on notation usually before you give it to musicians or do you create an audio produce a little audio thing to to give to the guys? Well, the audio is first for me, mm -hmm. just so I know what I'm what what I'm presenting it and how I'm going to organize all these different ideas and sounds that I'm hearing. And a lot of times I don't even know what meter it's in because I'm just feeling a vibe and I'm singing something. And then uh, I, um, uh, I have to find out a way to write it down so I could give it to somebody else to play. I mean, I remember I've, I've asked other people, what, what, how would you, how would you notate this or what, <laughs> how, what yeah. meter would you think this? Cause I mean, the, the idea, I mean, I mean, I may, I may hear it and feel it and all that stuff, but the, if you're playing with other people, the, you got to get them to do it. So right. you got to give it yeah. the way that it's going to be easiest for them to, to assess and, 
and be able to play. So you got to figure out the best way to notate it, what meters or whatever the vibe is. Mm -hmm. So, so they, that you can get out of, out of the musicians, what you're looking for. That's interesting that you, yeah, you'll sing it comes out organically and you might not even be thinking of a particular meter you had to later on when it's time yeah. to share with the musicians. Some of it, like, some of it's like, like, like that. Well, you know, multimeters. <laughs> where it's write goes. this down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, but I love it when that, when that, when that, when that happens. It's, it's, it's an amazing feeling. It, it's hard to even describe to other people, uh, you know, who aren't musicians or something. But you know, it's just, it's just a, a, a flow of creativity and stuff that just is just coming out. And, you know, I just like, I don't like to uh, put any reins on it. I just like to let it all come out. So, so the, the reins come and, and the obstructions come when I try to start thinking about the meter mm -hmm. and the time. And, and then I got to stop, stop all the flow and, and analyze it and figure it right. out. But I, I just want to get it all out and I'll analyze it later figure all that stuff out. So when later. you record it, do, do you kind of record multi-track or record like the, the first part and then record another part? When I, I'm trying to. I just found, I just found a new uh, uh, app called, it was called Loopy Pro or something like that, mm -hmm. where you can just do loops of different uh, tracks of loops mm -hmm. and stuff. Mm -hmm. And that and that's kind of how I'm, I'm, I'm hearing stuff. So once I learn the app <laughs> then i should be i think it'll solve a lot of problems for me because then i can hear like i was saying before how i'm hearing all these different things at once but i can only sing one of them at a time or maybe two if i'm tapping the drum beat on my legs or something but um but this way i can get one part down and then play it back while I'm hearing it back. I can sing the new part that I'm hearing to add on top of it. So I'm, I'm hoping that that's going to mm. really um, um, be a major step forward for my my pro my process. But uh, but usually it, if I can get it, get it down into my uh, computer or whatever uh, workstation I'm using at the time, and you can get it into some kind of loop and I can uh, play it and, s and sing it and then I can add other other parts to it. But it's, it's that that part is my technology stuff, even though I use it a lot and people think I use all this tech stuff. I feel like I'm w way behind the curve <laughs> and where I should actually be with it. So I'm trying to catch up and get all this stuff together. Yeah, yeah, yeah no doubt. So so, so yes yeah, so speaking of that so i want to play a couple clips this uh clip of you and and for anybody that's watching the replay if you're missing it live if all of a sudden that you're watching and then there's no music then that means there was a copyright thing and i had to had to cut this little part out but uh if if they let it stay up this particular channel i don't know how hardcore they are but uh we will See well, if, and, if, it's, if it's my personal stuff, you got it. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. What, I don't know what you play. <laughs> yeah, now this is it's on. Uh, this is this is it's an older, but it's it's just one of my favorite performances that that you all did. This is way. This is close to so for folks that the uh, I met. He probably don't remember me, but I met Robin. This would have been like two thousand three or four or something like that. He was uh, touring around with uh, Dave Holland. And uh, I think I think I gave you a copy, like one of the old versions of the Mucus's Diet co uh, copy of the book. But I was doing that with every, all, every jazz musician I saw, I was giving them copies of the book. But, uh, but that's about this era of when this, uh, this particular performance is. So uh, yeah, we'll play a little bit of this, this uh, song. Uh, metamorphosis another funny story for everybody knows uh, brother air my friend and drummer we tried to play this with our with a band a few years ago and man we couldn't get it together we, we were like we would get real close like okay it's almost there but then something some somebody couldn't play this part or do this and so 
So yeah, but yeah, no, I love this song. <laughs> that's that's off the chain. Wow, I haven't heard this. That's like twenty years ago. Yeah, twenty years and a head of hair ago. <laughs> So that so that would be an example. Was is that one? Did you write that down? Did, did, that was been, one that I was that I heard. Yeah. Put it in the loop. It's uh. I mean, I won't get too technical musical, but uh, yeah. it's just the bass line that kind of goes through. But I would put the loop. Have I would have the loop, just the bass line playing, and I was singing stuff against it, and I would go off and and get some something to, to drink or eat or something and i come back in and, and i walk into the room and i started hearing the bass line starting in a different place mm. because i just happened to walk into the room at that time and then i said oh yeah. wow you can hear it like this you can hear it like that and so that that that's why i call the metamorphose mm -hmm. because it because you could it just this is the same thing as just looking at something from different perspectives and which was the name of my first album actually because because i had compositions on there that had the same kind of thing you can just looking at something you know if you you know they used they were talking about like if you just if you saw it somebody if you saw an elephant from the front and describing it or if you looked at it from the mm -hmm. side yeah I mean, okay, you'd have three different descriptions of what it was but it's all the same thing right so, and i was looking at the music this hearing the music the same way so so it was going in and out of different things but just trying to figure out a musical way to so to have you, a continuity about it and yeah like you said <laughs> not to get into the <laughs> musical weeds but i'm curious because i i tried to write some of it down I'm, it, when you when it in the melody when it goes into what seems like it's you know there's a part where it's like it goes to this four like a four four and then speeds up like how did you write you write that down um let me see this is the decade this is the play the song okay well, I'll, I'll go 30 <laughs> seconds into the musical weeds so the first part is that 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 that's four beats da, da, yeah da, 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 da. then the next part is ba, da, 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 da. that's one two three four five six yeah so right. so um but the six and the four is also ten so you can hear it in fives. Right. Yeah. And, but, but it goes da 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 Yeah. So one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, da 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 Right. Ding, 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 ding. So you can hear the six. So the four beats are constant in the two phrases, and then the six beats can either um, stay into the funk for six mm -hmm. beats or like two like a two two bars of three tinkered dented and dented right right or dented and dented and dented and yeah so you can hear it as two bars oh. of three right or um Or dang -a -da 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 -a -da 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 or two bars of four and swing. It's the same six beats. One, two, three, four, five, six. Da 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 so it's this the, the six gets broken down two different ways and you can hear it as two bars of three or or, 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 or funk or you can hear it as two bars of four four swing yeah yep yeah yeah that's but, uh, I, 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 you know, that's enough. <laughs> I, mean, I, 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 I can go into more detail with you about it. Yeah, so yeah, you yeah. Just heard, you just heard it. 
Yeah. Twice. It just happened that baseline loop. You you hear it immediately. Right. Yeah. Uh, we'll, 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 I'll call you. We'll do that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah I appreciate that. And yeah, give, uh, you know, give, give my folks a little, a little taste, <laughs> taste of some of the. But this is what I'm thinking about all yeah. the time. All this kind of stuff is almost like, it's almost like math in a way, but, mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, but I'm, I'm awful at math, but I can feel stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I was going to, I was going to ask that the, kind of the next question is uh, the, you know, how, how do you think about the, the feeling of music or the filling maybe that's the, the, the uh, that, that dynamic. Uh, yeah. What, what's your thoughts on that? On the importance of that and, uh, you know, as I was thinking in terms of, you know, can can it be taught? Can you ta teach the, the 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 feeling? And if so, how? <laughs> What's the the best yeah. way to teach that? Then, uh, well, you you can teach the theory of it. A mm -hmm. lot of the stuff is is hard to teach. You just, um, and I'd like to think that I I, I I'm not sure how I came about it, but I was because I was thinking like this when I was a little when I was a kid, mm. even. And um, I remember some of the first big band charts I wrote when I was in college and stuff, you know, when I was like 17 or something like that. I got graduated from high school when I was 16. Mm -hmm. so, wow. I was, so I was, you know, in college, I was 18 or whatever, six, 17, 18. And I was writing big, big band arrangements and I was kind of hearing that kind of stuff then. And, um, and later on when I, because uh, you know stuff like the there's a band called the Mahavishnu Orchestra, John mm -hmm. McLaughlin. That was the mm -hmm. thing that really introduced me to odd meters and stuff. Mm. And that was um, I was like 14 or 15 then. Mm -hmm. so I was getting introduced to that kind of stuff back when I, when I was 15. So it's just hearing hearing um, music and the, the elasticity of rhythm and time. And space, and and how you things can morph into something else. And I used to like uh, uh, movies like that, and and and, and, and um, like even like like good directors. And um, uh, I talk about this sometimes when I do like some lectures at colleges and stuff about the like Alfred Hitchcock. Mm -hmm. like, he would have the you know I hear like <clears throat> arranging music and composition stuff like that, almost like like directing a movie because you're directing people's attention to what mm -hmm. you want it to be, or it's like sleight of hand in a way. Like he, Alfred Hitchcock may have a, it'd be a, a picture of the camera's focused. There's a party going on. The camera's focused on a glass of water, or or drink a glass of wine or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. You hear all these people talking and having a good time, and, you, and all you see is this glass of, of wine. And then you see somebody drop something in the wine, and you see the stuff, the, whatever was diffused in the wine. So all of a sudden, and then you, you know, as all this stuff is going on around it, but you're focused on somebody dropped something in the, in the wine, and yeah, so your attention is focused on something else, even though all this other stuff is going around. And you see somebody pick it up, and I was and, and I was always amazed at how you could keep uh, people's attention in one one spot while you're doing really doing something else over here, mm -hmm. and you can and you can do that musically also. You hear people are feeling like this groove, like in that the da 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 thing. Yeah, you feel this groove, and all of a sudden it goes ding ding ding. They say, "What's going on?" Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's kind of jarring, but. But it get, but it immediately grabs your attention, and now you you're waiting to see what the, you're waiting to see what's going to happen next. Right. So that and that's and that's the kind of stuff I like, like doing with uh, with my compositions and arranging arrangements and stuff. It's just grabbing somebody's attention because they they think they think they're here, and all of a sudden they they're here and they don't know how they got here. Yeah. But they, yeah, they're yeah, feeling yeah. this they're feeling this other groove, and it's like, how did that happen? And, and, yeah. And, yeah. And I really love that when, when, when music or 
or um, movies and things like that can do that can do that to me. I like I like being transported and, and don't even know I'm being transported. <laughs> yeah. Until I arrive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and that that's a perfect segue to my next question and topic is the I'm fascinated by the so-called trance like state and the ability for music to put somebody into a trance in the musicians or the crowd or just this this phenomenon of of a trance and so uh so as somebody that's performed in front of millions of people in your experience what elements of music most effectively induce a trance-like state in both the performer and the audience wow Damn, you come up with some stuff <laughs> <laughs> Um, um, this is, you know, I guess, a combination. One, one, I think, would be the, um, the, uh, the environment that you're in. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, if it's in a theater or if it's outside, it could be it's a different, different kind of vibe, and you mm -hmm. know, the lighting, setting, and everything. And then, you know, the, the rhythm can, can do it, and, and tonality. And uh, you know, it seems like some some the things that come immediately to mind is through things that kind of have some kind of uh, repetition or vamp or loop kind of vibe to it, because it's it's kind of cycling through. So people are ex expecting it to come back, and you and they kind of get lulled into this degree of expectation that that this is this is thing is happening and then what's going to happen on top of that to and, and, and then the, you know people can be open to more to more suggestive type things once that that kind of um in atmosphere or environment or ambience is established and um and and then you know the the, the tone of of maybe the tone of this the sound that's may take a melody or, or a lead or something like that or um you know like you mentioned train sound he he definitely can 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 go there yeah and um you know or even some more or synth uh, uh synthesizer type sounds that can that can get 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 you into that kind of vibe so i think the uh those are the three main things. It's like an amp the environment that you're in, mm. and uh, you know, and also you know the people that are around you. Mm -hmm. If you're just listening by yourself, it's one thing. Mm -hmm. And in your room, you because you, you have a lot more control. But if you to, to do it with a with a, and the more people that are involved, the more difficult it, I guess it would be. But setting up some kind of um, musical environment. Or like I said, the loop thing, where, where things kind of lull you into this kind of uh, rep mm -hmm. sense of repetition that something's going to happen, it's continuing to happen, and you're just rolling with it, and then this uh, then another element comes in that kind of directs you. I'm, I'm almost in the thing like we, we you, they, they used to have. I mean, I've never been hypnotized. Like the hypnotized, yeah. Yeah, where they got the thing swinging back and forth, and you just yeah. get rolled into that, and then this, this suggestive voice comes in while you're in this state, and it is able to um, imprint things upon your sensibilities and stuff that to that can um, get you to go in different certain directions. Yeah. they want you to go in. Yeah, because you're where you're open. It's that's the thing with music. It 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 does it can have that hypnotic effect of programming your subconscious. You know, you put down where your your mind calms down for a few moments, and then the vibrations that are coming in, which is kind of to the when I was talking about the power of music and the power of sound and vibration, and we and we see it, of course, used in all kinds of different ways. And, you know, certain musics you, you could argue are a little lower vibration intentionally. They know it. There's not 
saying nothing. They're like, yeah, we know this is this is what this is for. Is this is it's this? Is what you go like this? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like this. This is what you know. This this is what this is. And uh, but I'll tell you and that has that has a place uh, too. Yeah, yeah. Everything it is, has its place. And um, but uh, the thing that I would uh, that, that when I listen to what we just listened to there, and I hear, and this is something that I hear you do on at different times and different solos. But there, there's also this uh, it, kind of the uh, ecstatic building where it's so it's telling the story, and you're go, starting to go on this journey. It's building up, building up. And then at the at a climax point where one would say perhaps start speaking in tongues if it was a different if a different tradition if you didn't have a instrument up to your mouth maybe you, you start you know speaking in tongues or something but for me the point when I'm just listening uh, like that that solo there we just listen to once you go into the multiphonics that's all that's like now we're speaking in tongues you know now now we we've arrived now we're we're you know, we we are. To no, the that's next. a good point. A good point. I didn't. I didn't. You know, I had. I didn't know. I hadn't heard that solo in who knows how long. I had no <laughs> idea right. what it was going to do. But when, when it went there, and when, and, I, and I know when I, it just feels like that's. I'm trying to take it to the, uh, the next level, and I, I didn't even know what to do. So right. I just doing the multiphonic <laughs> and just, stuff. Yeah. And, 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 and I started getting and into that listening to the train and you know, he would do all those harmonics and that kind mm -hmm. of stuff. It, right. it was kind of my, my version of trying to do that on the trombone. Right. And yeah. Get that, that kind of throaty and yeah. Yeah. More than one note kind of thing happening. Almost like a primal scream in a way. Yeah. <clears throat> and just doing that on top of the, the rhythms that Billy Kilson was playing on drums and Dave was playing because it was just a trio. Right. It sounded like it was a little more going on. It was it was it was nice to hear that because I could hear stuff that I used to play and 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 it's not to get away from your question, but it's just so nice being in a band. Yeah, because you because you can get to play with the same people. We we had played at that point. We had played that song so many times, so you you know where where you can go and where it can go. And 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 nowadays bands, it's it's so hard to keep bands happening and playing and and is every right. You know, like, yeah. Can you make this gig on uh, and there, no no rehearsal, the rehearsals, they send you an MP3 or something, and maybe some music and you get the rehearsal yeah. Yeah. Now yeah. check an hour before you play. And you know, it's it can never take off to to the level that you can with a band. But yeah. But that adds that but that's also is supportive of what you're talking about, the spirituality and the, the kind of uh connection that you that you make personally and musically with uh band members is, is mm -hmm. very very profound mm. yeah because you have a connection yeah. with them you know you might you might have just been hanging out with them the night before doing who knows what <laughs> right <laughs> or, right and you, you had a long day traveling on a plane together or a bus or the train or wherever however you got to from one city or country to the next to play that night and so there's a certain kind of camaraderie that that exists that um, that goes beyond just playing the notes on the stage with somebody else. Yeah, yeah, no, nah, that's a good, yeah, good point. The the kind of energy, and once you start to really connect with other musicians, the where, to the point where you're you're on the same frequency, you're on the same wavelength, and the right. kind of ma magic that can happen. Right, because uh, when, when I started doing that kind of, I mean, we had played together so long that so they knew when I was going into the multiphonic stuff that we're, we're, we're going into the next gear and, and you know, and, and that it was probably going to be like towards the end of the solo. I was going to be ending the solo soon. And we're at the mm -hmm. end now, so let's, let's, let's go for it. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And um uh... See my my team they they always put together oh, wow. photos for me. So we were talking about the multiphonics. You know, this is uh, yeah. How, how, long, how long ago was this? Oh wow, that was. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what year it was, but uh, it was at the University of Pittsburgh mm. and Jerry Allen, 
who was a very good friend of mine. Mm -hmm. She uh, she was director of the jazz program then, and she had us out there doing a, a concert. They have I think they had like a yearly concert or something like that, and and Jerry had invited me. Kenny Barron was there and. Bob Hurst, it was it was really Jimmy Owens, I think, was there too, and it was just really, really a, a nice, nice thing, and, and just to to be able to spend some time with Farrow was 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 great. I, mean, I got to talk with him, and he would tell me about him playing with Train and stuff like that. So I, I you know, anytime I was able to be around any of the the masters and the and griots as mm -hmm. they turn out to be right they can, they can pass down the knowledge that and information that you're not going to get in a book or anywhere else except from the source so it was it's really uh uh very precious to have that's those kind of that kind of time with the with people like him so it was great yeah definitely and uh and at one yeah one point on the, the Dave Holland my my friend wouldn't he 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 would he he would like me to say Dave if if you're watching we would love to see that band come back together. <laughs> I, I've asked them. I've asked I, him I know. times. I had to stop asking. <laughs> yeah, he, I, he I know. He moved on to some other stuff. He, he yeah, playing, playing so, with my yeah. brother Kevin's plays with them a lot now. Mm -hmm. These days, and I think he's in Europe now with Eric Harlan and Jaleel mm -hmm. Shaw. So he, he's doing his thing. So he's it's cool. And I owe Dave a lot. We haven't played together in a long time, but I always mm -hmm. say if, if I never get a chance to play with him again ever in life, I still owe him. So I have a lot of love for him. And um, and it, it, it was, that period of time was, was really nice playing with, with uh, Chris Potter and Steve Nelson and uh, Billy Kilson. And then later, even longer time with Nate Smith was the drummer. Right. Mm -hmm. was going on to do some great things with his own band. So it was, it was, it was a really uh, beautiful time period in my life. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, uh, so that <clears throat> leads to question about Coltrane. So considering John Coltrane's role as a spiritual leader in jazz, how do you see his influence manifesting in today's jazz scene? Hmm. I'm, I'm not, I'm not really seeing amongst younger musicians. I'm not seeing his, that, that the spiritual aspect I'm not seeing mm -hmm. manifest itself as strongly as the musical legacy. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are trying to sound like him playing the, you know, notes and um, their approach to the horn and things like that. And, 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 and you can hear that, his influence in a lot of players, you know, especially saxophone players, but not even limited to saxophone players. But the, the spirituality part, I think, is is not as strong, unfortunately. And I, but hopefully, you know, people sometimes it takes people time to get to that. I, I felt that I was on that path very early on, mm -hmm. but um, but you know, people have their own their own path and their own time to have things evolve. And um, it's something that I try, I try to um, get to when I, I do, I do like, when I do le like lectures, like I was mentioning at colleges and things like that. I'm, I'm actually, I'm going to, I'm going to be doing a master class in, in Brazil, in Sao Paulo next month when I go there. And, and I always talk about Buddhism because that's, you know, like the most important thing in my life in mm -hmm. terms of what I'm doing and um, and how it affects my music and me and as a person and me as a musician. And and I've, I've, for, I've been fortunate that over the years I've had people come up to me after a few, not a whole lot, unfortunately, but people who come up afterwards and, and, and ask me, uh, I like your music. Could, could you tell me some more about this Buddhism? And I and I love that because it informs your. It can inform your music, and 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 take it into a add another aspect to it that a lot, a lot of people may not be um, open to. 
mm -hmm. or, or aware of yet in their own experience. And uh, I would I do I, I do some teaching sometimes. Well, and I, I Victor Wooten who's a good friend of mine who's an incredible bass player. He has a music and nature camp down outside of Nashville. Mm. And last summer I went to his he has a spirit camp. And so all these musicians who are all into some degree of spirituality or whatever, mm. and all kind, it's, it's, it's crazy. He, it's, it's an amazing thing. And he has this book called The, the Music Lesson, which I highly recommend mm. to everybody. And um, so I, and so being there, it, opened, it was nice being in an environment where there were a lot of people who were open to all kinds of different things and modalities and 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 it's not just about playing the 12 notes <laughs> it, it, it's, it's just shows you how music it can get into all kinds of stuff his brother roy who some people may know as future man they were playing with because victor and and um roy played with the bella flex band mm -hmm. And um, Roy was doing a class on his rhythms and stuff. And, and he was talking about, this was at the spirit camp. And he was talking about how uh, a rhythm, like a three three against two rhythms, like dun, dun, dun. Like I, I, I hear it as like not difficult. If you start two hands together, not difficult. One hand is doing three and one hand is doing two. Mm. And he he showed me this on this YouTube video that 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 rhythm, when it's sped up, turns into a pitch, mm. and wow. you speed that up, it turns into um, a, a a color, it, and then wow. it, and then you speed that up, it turns into light. Mm. And then he's telling me how to go light bulbs. They have a frequency written on the light bulbs. Right. And it's about how all, and all that stuff can is it, it just it was mind blowing. Mm. And just how this starts with a, a rhythm. Yeah. And is is like the 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 root, or can be the root of light. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Yeah. It's like yeah. so deep. I mean, goes yeah. From, from, from a rhythm to a pitch to a color, the color spectrum has little frequencies. And then that you sp keep speeding that up and then it turns into light and stuff. It's like, it, it, it just made me really understand uh, or, or I didn't really did, didn't understand that. It made me, I, I need to study and I just yeah. try to understand the the prof profundity and how profound and mystical and magical and it, it maybe it's, it's just basic physics. <laughs> physics, yeah, yeah, yes. The of, 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 of music and and how all of it is all connected. I said, this is light. <laughs> it was right. just it was deep. Yeah, real yeah. deep. And 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 and. Uh, and Victor has all kinds of stuff like that. Roy and his other, other brothers, Joseph and Reggie, Wooten brothers. They're some deep cats, man. And I, I love those cats. And I, and I like spending time with them. And um, I just did, uh, I was just down there teaching uh, like two weeks ago. And you said uh, that spirit spirit camp they, yeah, they run? He, he has different different camps. He, mm. the, we were there just teaching some some high school students from Michigan mm -hmm. that last I mean, two weeks ago, and then he followed it up. They just did the ba base camp last week. And then he has a music and nature camp. Some people, somebody wrote me, a couple of people wrote me, said, that, oh, I was at the music and nature camp with you uh, last, last year, and it was great, and I appreciated it. And, you know, you just hear stuff, and there's people coming in from all over the world to, to come come to this thing, and it's it's really amazing what he has going on down there. And I'm just really fortunate and and happy to be a part of it, and and definitely check out the book, the music lesson. It's some deep stuff. Yeah, <laughs> I'll uh, do that. The music lesson, check that out. And uh, yeah, I showed. <laughs> Earlier, I I love this 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 uh, painting of the uh, 
the church of John Coltrane, where he, he was canonized as a saint and has a church. Oh, <laughs> out will, 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 I am Coltrane. Yeah. yeah. I remember yeah, going that. to San Francisco. I was playing in San Francisco one time. I got out the air. Maybe they saw because I had an instrument. Somebody uh -huh. came up to me at the airport and, and it was telling me about this, gave me a card and stuff. It was telling me about this. Uh, this church that they had, I was like, wow, San Francisco got all kinds of stuff. Yeah, I was blown away. I mean, it was years <laughs> ago when I saw a documentary about it and that I had friends that it, it went there. But when I heard about that and I was like, oh, that sounds like yeah, I'm going to check that out if I'm <laughs> out that way. But yeah, that's uh, but that I, I agree with you that that legacy, I'm not seeing that with the uh, with the young, younger folks as much. Uh, that yeah, that that spiritual element, that that kind of deep deep cultural piece of why, it's like why why are you playing music? You know, <laughs> is it just uh, you know, it's, it's fun. I did it in school, and now I want to, <laughs> you know, I just want to play. And and or is it like the, you know, is there a real deep purpose that uh, that that only you know that you can't even articulate that that comes out in your music? And uh, yeah, because uh, and of course, I, I had, you know, I, I don't <laughs> I, I took a break from academia a number of years ago once I yeah, I took 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 a break. But uh, you know, when I wrote my dissertation, that's what a, that's what it was about, was I looked oh, okay. at jazz education and the institutionalized jazz education. And I was ex examining the the pedagogy and black culture and the uh the issues there where there's the things that that are uh omitted on purpose seemingly omitted on purpose in academia and uh but i uh it's 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 one of those things where and, and there's i'm not you know like i said i'm kind of out the game now but back when my my experience of it there was just certain things that were omitted we were like wait a minute where where's where is let's talk about pharaoh sanders and alice coltrane and that entire it's like that entire period of music unless it's somebody like yourself or it's there's this handful i know there's folks that do get into that or talk about it or teach that but the general pedagogy i'm not seeing it you know, or at least I didn't see it. Like I said, I've, I've been out the game. Maybe it all changed on me and it's all there now, but I hadn't seen it uh, back then. And that, to me, that was just such an important piece of the legacy of the, where they just, it's like, they just, it gets to that. And then the, you know, or Archie Shepard, just that entire, an entire part of the legacy is just sort of like, let's, let's, let's walk around that. <laughs> and then, right. you know, kind of. Yeah. It's just the, 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 the good, the upside is that, I mean, when, when I was the age of the younger musicians that are coming up now, you had to, you had to uh, uh, find some what kind of way to encounter this stuff. And usually it's from other musicians, but all this stuff is available online now. If you want to, if you really want to seek it out, you can find it. And, and that we didn't have, we didn't have access to that kind of technology and information back then back right. then but but we still but some of us still got it so mm -hmm. so this is you know there's really well no, it, yeah i mean it seemed like it want to get it yeah like it came came through the mentorship and hanging out with the elders and being in the environments that where where all the the folks were at and uh immersed immer being immersed in the culture which is like what i argue in my <laughs> my dissertation that <laughs> cultural immersion which is is not encouraged that was part of my my gripe was is when i was in school i consciously and purposely went out into the black community to find the best musicians that i could that was that that weren't a part of academia and so that i was getting both you know as i was getting the academic right. thing and uh, but i was also getting that you know guys that you know, street musicians that can play circles around some of the best, you know, <laughs> folks that's in a Eddie orchestra and uh, guys that had been on the road with whoever, you know, that, all that kind of stuff and, and really being immersed in that, uh, 
it gave just in turn, just personally, you know, it gave me in the time that I came up, you know, in my being young guy, when I came up in, because it was, it was even harder to, to find it. Like you, you really had to go look for it like that. And, uh, and it's just something that I'm just happy. I had that opportunity and then I knew to, to, to do that. And it's in, uh, because you would talk a lot about the, the the elders and reference for for the elders and the mentors that you had a, had the opportunity to be with and it it there is definitely seems like that's a part of the tradition that the passing of the torch and this you, you just got to people yeah. did so people did so much for me i'm i'm eternally indebted to so many people who who saw something in me and they you know really uh Stoke the fires and you know drop a little thing on me that really and, and you know and, and you know you have to be receptive to it. People might drop stuff on you, and if you're not receptive to it, then it just drops to the floor or something. Right. But um, you know, even from my uncles, my Ray Bryant, piano player, and he used to drop little stuff on us, and Al Gray, trombone player, he was in Philly also, and. You know, and when I met, you know, Slide Hampton and, and J.J. Johnson and all these people dropped stuff on me and, and you know, and, and did so much to help me. And, you know, and all the elders, you know, playing with Art Blakey and Elvin Jones, Dave, you know, my first recordings was Sun Ra. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he was in, from Philly. He he as eccentric and wild as he was, he had, he had some stuff to drop on me. I, I really had a lot of respect. For him. <laughs> yeah. And, and, you know, and now I'm turning around and, and I'm, I'm like the old, the OG. I'm like, right. <laughs> I feel sorry for the people counting on me, but <laughs> <laughs> I try to do what I can, but you know, I don't necessarily feel like I'm worthy of being in position, but you know, time puts you in that position. If if you're you know if you're around long enough, then you be you become the old head. <laughs> right. Okay. Here's one one that my, my guys got there. Yeah. EJ. Yeah, Elvin. Yeah. Man, I loved Elvin, man. And we we had such a really nice uh, connection too. I mean, you can see that how, how our friendship right there. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And I wasn't even in the band then. <laughs> I was out the band. He this was at the Blue Note in New York, and he would just he would call he would call, call me up and ask me to just come down and sit in just so we can play together again. And we had we had a really nice um, connection, which unfortunately didn't get really documented the way I would have loved it to be. Mm -hmm. But um, but I used to go see him play at the Vanguard in New York, and I would uh, he's had. Uh, all these different people in this band, Ari Brown and um, damn, Space and White. I forgot what it was. Andrew White, I think his name was, mm. and uh, amazing sax players. And uh, and uh, he um, he would just mesmerize me. You know, just just listening to him play and watching him play, and then. Uh, Several years later, um, Sonny Fortune, who was a good friend of mine, the sax player in a band, Eddie Henderson couldn't make a gig. Mm. And Sonny called me and asked me if I could, if I would be able to sub for Eddie at a gig at the Regatta Bar in Boston, mm. in Cambridge. I was like, hell yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yes, to play with Elvin Jones. Are you kidding? Yeah. So when I went there and played, and we locked like that right away. And he hired me in the band that night, mm. and um, and I, you know, I told him I said, man, I, I love the drums. I like playing with the drums, and and he's he's my all time favorite drummer. And I said I like to try and approach the trombone very percussively or rhythmically. He said, I hear that, I hear that. So we we locked real musically right away, and. Um, I mean, like I said, to the point where he, when I was out the band, he was asked me to come down and sit in, and and he, for me, Elvin was 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 the cat man. He was just uh, I was just I was be like on stage 
I was the closest one standing next to where I was standing right next to his high hat. And I was mm -hmm. watching him like a hawk and I couldn't figure out what the hell he was doing. <laughs> I was hearing all this stuff coming out. It, it was just so amazing. And, and I was just so, so blessed to be able to, to get a chance to have, have Elvin playing, playing behind me and, and, and pushing me and, and prodding me on and just to be able to, to learn and be, and bathe in his rhythms was was it's like being baptized yeah yeah <laughs> yeah and I, I love and i miss him so miss him so much but uh you know i guess he like like i was saying now i'm, I'm like i got a, like that story just there i'm able right. to pass that on to people but it's, he's not here physically to really that you can interact with him in that way but I, I I really really cherished the time I had with him, and I got yeah. to play with McCoy Tyner's band a little bit, and and you know to me I was like I got to play a chance with half of my favorite band of all time. <laughs> yeah, right. I said I imagine them playing <laughs> playing with Train instead of my sad ass. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I wish I could have heard that band. Man, wow. And Slide Hampton used to tell me stories about them. He said, he, he said, because, you know, the Vanguard, I don't know if people don't know, it's, you, you got to go down some stairs. Mm -hmm. It's like a basement jazz club. He said, when you open the doors, the sound would hit you in the face. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, uh, I miss, I miss that, that era, but, you mm -hmm. know, I'm glad, I, I'm glad I was born in the era I am. So, you know, so, and, yeah. Yeah. You were able to catch. To, to catch catch some of it, you know, yeah, catch that, it, that last forward and backwards, yeah, and a little yeah. To, to all the stuff. But it was, and, uh, it was, I'll, it was, I'll share this with you. This is this is me and, and Curtis. I got oh, a couple. Wow. Of, yeah, this was back in my college days, and because oh, uh, wow. so, I, anytime somebody came in. I didn't even give anybody else a chance. Like I made sure I was like, I'm driving them around. I have my car, my little 89 Cutlass Sierra. I'm driving them. And so whoever came in, like I'm driving. And uh, and I got to spend a lot of time with them just in them few days. And uh, and yeah, man, that was just, just amazing. Yeah. yeah, Curtis. Curtis meant so much to me too. He was one of those guys that gave me so much encouragement. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was, it was so heartfelt and and I always took it to heart. I remember him telling him he's he said he said he said, I've been waiting for somebody like you to come along. Mm. And yeah. I mean to hear that coming from Curtis Fuller. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, wow. I felt, I felt like and I still feel like I have a certain degree of responsibility to mm. you know, do what I can the best I can and pass it on. And and there's so much more stuff I want to do. Mm -hmm. And 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 you know, uh, and here you know, hearing the clip that you play with Dave, like I said, I miss playing in a band where you can mm -hmm. really get your, your chops up to the road chops, as we call it. You know, yeah, different, yeah, different, different from practicing in in your apartment or your house or something and doing a gig here and there. We were on the road all the time for years. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it, it gives you a certain kind of development but I, I think i'm physically playing the trombone better than i ever have now mm. so I, I really feel i have a lot to say and, and a lot to do and i'm trying to get myself in the position to do that post pandemic now it seems like things are coming back and i got a lot of plans in terms of trying to uh put together some music that i want to present in, in mm -hmm. a way that i want to present it yeah yeah definitely and in the in the real quick the story for the folks the, all the folks here on the channel with with curtis so i gave him a, a copy of the mucus's diet book and he he like he looked at it real tenderly and then he told me that somebody had given john coltrane when he was on his deathbed had given him a copy of the mucus's diet and you know, it was like, it's too late at that point, you know, but that, that just the fact, cause I didn't have, I'd never heard that. I didn't have a clue of that. And he just, he looked at it. So just so, you know, gingerly, and then just kind of looked up, he was like, 
I knew it. And, and this, he's like, man, they gave Coltrane a copy of this. And, uh, the, you know, when he was on his deathbed at the end. And I just, that, that was profound to me is cause I was like, Whoa, that was, uh, yeah, that was, that was, that was like a special, special moment. Yeah. And, I, I, def- uh, I, I, I definitely want to give a shout out to you too. Cause I remember you, you took a couple of lessons with me and I was so impressed with you as, oh, a, well, as a person you. and as a musician. And we were just, you know, we were just, talking you know, it was like two cats just talking <laughs> after, after after the lesson part was over and then I said, so what are you into and you start telling me about the mucus diet and all this you know you all the uh academia stuff you had done and and i already heard that you could play trombone really well and and i was just so impressed by because you know I'm, I'm i'm into the whole diet thing big time also but I, i'm not to the level that you're at on, on it yet but um you know I, I think what you're doing is really amazing, and, I, and you know I have so much respect for what you're doing and 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 promoting and and it, and the diet is you know what you eat and taking care of your body, your temple is everything. I mean, if you can't you don't have that, you can't play music, you can't do nothing. I mean, you lose losing money twice. You gotta you can't work and you gotta pay doctor bills. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Yeah. So I really, I really give a big shout out to, and you gave me, a, you definitely gave me a copy of um, some PDFs of the of the uh, of the mucus diet and and uh, several other. Yeah, I haven't, so, yeah. I haven't, I haven't dived dove into them. I was, I'm, a, I'm gonna get back with you on and 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 maybe you can mentor me on on the, bring me up to speed on that. You know, I'm, I'm doing my stuff now. I'm I'm, I'm into. Uh, um, well, I've, I've, you know, I've been, I'm not, I'm not, ve- I wouldn't say vegan. I, I eat a little fish every mm-hmm. now and then. And, um, but, uh, but it's mostly, well, you know, I haven't eaten like meat, meat since I was like 19. Mm-hmm. So I was moving in that direction. And, and I've, in the last year and a half, I, I've gotten into sea moss a lot. Mm. Which, which I'm really feeling. I like. Mm-hmm. I really like like this whole sea moss thing, and I juice and mix and do smoothies all the, every day, and all that mm-hmm. kind of stuff in water. And I still ex- work out, go to the gym, and chanting every day. So I'm trying to take care of the, you know mind, body, and spirit, and and keep everything moving forward. But I but I definitely wanna wanted to give you your props and uh, and 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 really let you know how much I appreciate the work you're doing. Oh, well, thank, thank you, man. That's, yeah, I pre- appreciate that, definitely. And let's see, uh, here is the one. I didn't spend a lot of time with Slide, but I got, got to meet him. Oh, wow. Yeah. And, and th- this was one of them situations where, you know, you meet meet one of your idols, and, boy, I – I, he had to be sitting there like, boy, this guy sounds horrible because <laughs> I was sound, I sounded pathetic trying to play on some just where, I don't know where, what where, was where, wrong. where 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 is this? Man, this was like 2002. I think this was in uh, 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 Louisville, University okay. of Louisville. Yeah, right. where they were had because because he he was there, and uh, yeah, they had it was like a little jazz one one of those little jazz things they have down there. They used to have the Jamie Aber souls. Yeah, like yeah. It wasn't the actual Jamie Aber, but it was like one of the a series. Yeah, yeah. Right? They, they, they I remember were he brought me down there to Louisville mm-hmm. to do some stuff. Wow, slide. I mean, I could go on forever about slide, but yeah, you know, yeah. That was, was uh, he, he's he's done so much. He did. He's one of those people that bent over backwards. Man, he gave me keys to his apartment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, he just took me under his wing when I met him because he was playing in Philly. And, uh, uh, you know, I had just, he had just, I just, that album had just come out, the Sophisticated Giants or something. He arranged the album for Dexter Gordon, mm-hmm. Woody Shaw, and everybody was on it. And, and I, never really heard of them, but I heard this record. They were playing on the local jazz station, WRTI in Philly. And I was like, man, and he, they said he was playing in Philly. So I definitely went 
and Al Gray was there. Mm. And um and I knew Al from you know for, for a while. And I guess Al said something to him because at, at the intermission he introduced me to Slide and I shook his hand. He said, Slide said, Do you have your horn? Mm. I said, Yeah. <laughs> so why is he asking me if I have my horn? He said, You want to play some next set? And I was like shocked. I was like, why would he ask me to play? And you know, I never that's the first time I laid eyes on him. Mm. And, and and apparently Al Graham must have mentioned something to him about me. And I, I sat in on a couple of songs and he hired me for his world of trombones band that right. that that night. Wow. And um so I started going up to New York. Unfortunately, Philly and New York is like a you know an hour forty minute train ride away from each other. Mm -hmm. And I I used to stay with him, and because I didn't I didn't know anybody in New York, and he let me stay at his place. And, he, and then I used to come up for rehearsals with the band, and I didn't have a place to stay. I didn't know anybody. He gave me keys to his apartment, and we would practice together all day. Mm. I mean, I, I never practiced that much. I was trying yeah. to impress this cat. I was like, no, no, I'm, I'm serious. I'm serious. <laughs> we were just playing like damn near six, eight, six, eight hours a day. Yeah. I never practiced that much. First thing I did in the morning before I even went to take a piss in the morning was play some long tones. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I want them to know I'm deadly serious about this. And the last thing I did at night was play some more long tones, soft long yeah, tones. Yeah, yeah. I went in <laughs> And I would just follow him around to all the clubs, and I was, I'm with him. And I was getting in all the clubs free in New York, and and I mean, he just did so much for me, and and I really, really appreciate him so much. And his birthday is in two days, mm. Sunday, April 21st. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So. I'm glad you got a chance to 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 uh, deal with Slide. He was he was an amazing amazing cat in so many ways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely, I feel privileged. I was able to meet quite a quite a few folks that because that was just kind of like the the tail end of, every, of a lot of a lot of those legacies. And uh, as I was at College Conservatory of Music and. They had, I don't know what, they had had some kind of grant or money or something, but when I was there, almost every week somebody was coming in. They had guest artists coming in. And uh, so it was just like, yeah, yeah. That no, was it's very, it's very nice and, and special when uh, <clears throat> university programs who have the, the resources and means to bring people in and expose younger musicians to people who, who've been out here doing what they want to do. Right. It's a very important aspect to the music. And that's the closest a lot of people get, you know, to, to the mentor thing that you were talking about before. Um, you know, because <clears throat> we don't get this, the, the gig thing and playing situation. You may not have access to be playing with somebody who's in New York <laughs> often right. or at all. And to just to be able to be able to talk with them. And, you know, like I met Julian Priester, um, he was playing, he came through Philadelphia mm. and I just knew that he had played with Herbie Hancock and all these bands. I just went to see him just because he was a trombone player and I would heard a couple of his records and I got a couple of conversations with him. And he said, I said, well, what would you recommend that I do? He said, he said, go to New York. That was, that's, that's all he said. And, you know, I feel like I said, Philly was so close. Mm -hmm. And you know, and and as fate had it, I was able. To, I took his place in the Dave Holland band. <clears throat> mm. and Julian was playing yeah. with Dave Day's band right before I joined it. So, but the the, the thing is, you got to in order to to take somebody's place, you got to have a trombone in there in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> right, <laughs> right. So all those cats open doors. So I would have a, a slot to even f to fill, uh, you know, and all the stuff that the greatest JJ and Curtis and Al Gray and Slide played. They, they, they opened up doors for us to have a a a, a, a trombone chair to even be considered because you know how right. 
trombone is always the last hired, first fired. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> the horn <laughs> sections and the jazz stuff, which was one of the reasons I, I had so much respect for the Latin and salsa music. Because mm -hmm. yeah, I, I remember I, I did a recording with this singer named La Lupe. Mm -hmm. And um, I would, they got a, I got a call to do the session. This is probably back in the 80s or something. And um, Barry Rogers was on it. Jose Rodriguez, I think Sam Burtis, and, um, and 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 I, would, I showed up and be there. And I said, I said, this is cool. This is gonna be great. I said, I said, when are the other horns coming? They said, oh, this is it. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't even conceive. I said, the whole horn section for the recording is just was four trombones. That mm -hmm. I, I had never played in any kind of situation where that was the norm. Right. And and then, you know, then there was a band, Manny Okendo had a band in um, New York of Conte uh, Libre. And uh, uh, Andy and Jerry Gonzalez and all these people played, and Steve Ture and a lot of people used to play in, 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 mm -hmm. that, in that band. And I was, I was able to sub on that band a few times, but just the whole Latin, music scene which i have so much respect for it was amazing and, and brazilian music trombone raul de souza who i got a chance mm -hmm. to meet a couple of times and 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 it just and then just the latin music scene in particular because i it was a band called uh, uh la contraria in philadelphia that i used to play with rafi hernandez and um and the thing that I really loved about it, it was the one that you go to the, the gig and it was, uh, it was the only time I would see, you could see grandparents, the parents and the baby and the kids all mm. at the same event, enjoying their music. And you don't, I don't, I don't see that in any other kind of community. Right. Yeah. From that, that, eight, that rate, I mean, this is like, you know, people who kids who were like eight, 10 years old and the grandparents who are 80 years old. Right. All yeah. in the yeah. same place, enjoying the same culture, their culture and their music. It was beautiful. And yeah. I, I, yeah. I never forgot that. Yeah. 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 What the, how, how do we keep, keep that, <laughs> the, the legacy of the elders? That's, that's one of my questions. What, <laughs> like what steps are you taking to ensure the legacies of the elders and <laughs> just and how to how to do it in this because it we, we had actually did a an episode uh me and my friend had did an episode about the uh meant just the the tradition of mentorship is there's this some this younger generation seems to not they don't make that a priority. They don't know that they're supposed to make that a priority, that there is something outside of the formal relationship that you want to try to. And, and, and it just doesn't happen. You have to make an effort to go be someplace or show up or go hang out or, hey, can, can I carry your bag for you? You need to do You're something. Right to go plug in. So what way, or what do you have any, <laughs> any solutions or, uh, I'm not sure. I, th that? I think, I think part of it is that, that whole aesthetic and that whole, the ethics of that is kind of like a, a casualty of the technology. Mm. I mean, like I was saying, I had to go, if I went to see Julian Priester, I heard he was in town. I had to go see, I heard Slide Hampton was in town. I had to go physically, see him but the people but you can see people play on youtube you can see charlie parker playing on youtube and and, and they feel like they're getting it right. through because they're watching the video and they can copy everything that's on the video but there's nothing like the life to life connection and 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 that's i think that's what's um the aspect that they're missing and, and don't see the, the, the strong significance of, of that life to life connection, talking to somebody, being in their presence and, and really feeling them as a as a human being and as a person. Right. Having them talk to you and relate to you one on one, as opposed to just watching the how seeing how they move or how they sound, which is possible, which is great to have access to also. But 
followed, they need to follow that up with, you know, make like you were saying, making the effort to to connect with. I mean, you can now you can you can you can. I got people texting me and writing me from all over the world. I don't even know who the hell they are. Mm -hmm. I mean, I appreciate it, but I didn't have access to doing that before. Right. I, I tell people if I said if I wanted four people to hear my music back in the day. When I was your age, youngster, <laughs> I'd have to make get four envelopes, <laughs> like four cassettes, yeah, or four CDs. Go run off, go to the go to the copy store and get four copies of my resume. Four, you had to make four of them just to and then go to the post office, four envelopes, and just to mail four of them. I yeah, said, you can you can give forty thousand. But with a click of a button now, right? <laughs> and so, yeah, so it was just the, the kind of effort that that you have to that we had to make before. I mean, I'm glad that it's easier to do now because it's easier for me to do now too. But but I had but I had the training and the the conditioning of going through the period of time when that wasn't possible. Where so you really understand the significance of it and appreciate the ability to do things the way you can do it now. So people, they, it's, you know, and the only thing that I can do, which was your question, sorry, <laughs> is, is relay these stories like I'm doing mm -hmm. now and make myself accessible. Like I said, mm -hmm. I, I feel like I'm a, a poor substitute for the people that mentored me, but I'm the best you got. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, no, better I mean... or worse. <laughs> No, and you're and you're definitely the one of the ones that's that's doing that that's that's filling in uh, in that legacy. Uh, no, I definitely, definitely feel a, I feel a responsibility because, pe uh, like I said, I've mentioned several times during this interview, people did so much for me and, and went out of their way and bent over backwards just to encourage me. For, you know, for my mom and my dad and my brothers, everybody, my whole family, friends, and you know, people I played with growing up when I was a teenager and and on on up through um, all the people that I've met since I became quote unquote professional and, 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 and made this my living. People just did so much to help me. And I, I feel like I definitely need to pass it on and I'm doing the best I can at doing that. Yeah, yeah. It's Definitely a lot of the technology is a uh, seems like a double edged sword because on, on one hand, man, we got access to so much so quick at the at the is the click of a button. But the other side is without that ha happening to really like, being forced to search these things out and to go go to the library and get uh, records and CDs or uh, I was obsessed with trying to find. Uh, just video and uh, so I'd go to the library and just search like what what do they have and it was because I still was the I'm, I'm in the transition from the VHS to the CD when I was uh, I was 15 and 16 going to the library get, get the right. CDs and didn't know anything about it. it's like I'm in jazz band and I'm just going and getting CDs based on do I recognize a name and do I see a picture I like and uh, that's actually how I as I was, I was real early on and I had had gotten a couple things on Miles. I was like, oh, I like Miles Davis. And it had uh, it was like, oh, John Coltrane. I, okay, I recognize his name. Then I saw uh, the, the Interstellar Space CD and uh, and I'm like, oh, John Coltrane. OK, let me let me see what this is. And uh, woo, that, that <laughs> like that, that's one of that changed my life that you didn't. Yeah, I didn't know. I just yeah. thought it was going to be, and I heard that, and I knew I didn't understand it, but I knew it was something special and important, and that one day I would better understand it. Yeah, like, is and, this uh, the same person? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, wait a minute, this does not sound like... <laughs> it sounds uh, like my favorite things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, this is this is something, something different, but it did come through to me as, like, this was something almost like supernatural like beyond this you know in the spiritual realm or you know we we lose language 
for that uh, that whole thing but yeah i just that that really impressed upon me so and and opened me up so later you know i was was open to different you know, different kinds of expression and just right. more, more things you know sort of outside the box kind of stuff but uh, but yeah, it definitely it, it seems like because unless the younger folks do get around some some elders or, or somebody that knows about more than just what's whatever is trending, then uh, then they they don't hear about a lot of this this these things. You know, yeah. just, it's like the, the, the people can like the slide Hampton. You could you could see lots of videos of him playing you just hear he's amazing and you hear all this stuff you can analyze this stuff but you know i was sitting with slide he'd be in his robe mm -hmm. <laughs> at his table writing a big band chart with just a a, p a pencil and menu and a, and a score pad yeah no piano nothing i said i said look i said how you hear this stuff how do you how you know how you know this chord is going to work? You know how, you don't even have you not even mm -hmm. you don't have a piano. He said when you do it you don't it long enough you start to hear you know it works you can hear it. I was just amazed. I watched him write big band arrangements with no pa no piano. Wow! <laughs> and wow. we go play the arrangements and it sounds amazing. I was I was like oh you know I'll never get I got. I got so many computers, maids, <laughs> and all kinds of stuff. I don't think I, I will get to that level, but you know, but just that I was able to experience that and see that was had made such an impression on me that no matter how many little accolades I may get from people or how good I think I'm getting, I'm not gonna, I'm never gonna get to that level. Mm. Or, or I got a long, let me put it this way, I have a long way to get to go before I get to that level. I'm, I shouldn't say never, but, you know, I'm, I have something to strive for. I'm, mm -hmm. always, trying to, it's, I'm always trying to get better mm -hmm. and improve and find things, you know, and not just in music. That's why I, 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 I repeat again, I'm, I'm going to get back, get with you about this mucusless diet and I can get better on that. And, and that, you know, it helps everything, how you feel and, and, um, you know, I'm getting older now. I'm getting, I got some aches and pains I didn't have before. I can go mm -hmm. head to toe and tell you about something that's hurt. <laughs> <laughs> right. But, yeah. you know, I'm still, yeah. still, still trying to eat well and exercise. And of course, I'm chanting every day. And, and, you know, so I'm, 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 st I'm still feeling, I, I feel like I got a lot more to get, a lot, lot more to give and a long way to go. And I'm looking yeah. forward to doing all of it. Yeah, yeah, and that that made me think of so something you had said in a talk that I watched years ago that uh that I often think about. Where you were talking about that in the beginning, you were trying to really mimic some of the styles of you know JJ and you know, on slide and the guys, but there, you came to a point where you're like, I'm not gonna sound like you know, it's just I'm not gonna do that style or sound like that. I'm just need to play like me and do do my thing. Yeah, that that's when I started before I got into Buddhism. I was, you know, I was I was living in Slide's house. Mm -hmm. uh, me and my brother Kevin. We were yeah. Slide had a place 245 Carlton Avenue in Brooklyn. And he had his brownstone that his family was was in. And um Kevin and I rented the, the top floor. And I would hear Slide playing all day. He, he got to the point where he said, you know, I was trying, I was trying to play. He said, he said you don't need to practice with me anymore. <laughs> because he just got tired of my ass. <laughs> but but I, was, I was always listening. And, um, and, he was, he's, and he's the one that really got me into JJ. And, you know, and I made a connection with JJ at that point. And, mm -hmm. um, and these cats, I'm trying to sound like them and, and there's no way I'm gonna sound like them. I, I hear slide playing every day. I said I'm never gonna sound like that. I said it's, you know, that was. I said I should sound like me. Mm. And then I said, but, but who am I? And I didn't have a good answer for that. Mm. I was like, wow. <laughs> and that's when I started. I, I went to the point. I, I started. Um, I used to. Uh, I started buying what they used to call back then, like 
amp, I forget what they call it, new age tapes, but they need before they even called it that. Yeah, it was, right, right. Just sounds just burn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Just be, uh, I should get like just nature, sounds of nature. Just mm-hmm. I would go to sleep to this whales, listen to the ocean. Yeah. And and at the end of it, it's when I I when I encountered Buddhism. And then that's when I started chanting, and, and that really helped me. Um, because this is this is during that period where they had the boom boxes, cats who mm-hmm. had these giant, <laughs> giant uh, speakers and right. stuff carrying around Radio Raheem. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Do the right thing. Yep. And, and they'd be, be on the subway. They have cat would have a loud ass speakers playing something on the front and the other one had a loud one playing it on the back and it, it was during all that period and then walkmans came and the walkmans came out and and people started wearing the headphones on and, and kind of took the boom box scene got kind of wiped out but it was during all this period where you got bombarded with all this stuff and and i just needed some silence from I stopped listening to music as much and I just started listening to nature and then the Buddhism came into my life right around that period and and then I was able to chant and start to understand my life and who I was a lot more and a lot clearer and that voice started getting stronger and <clears throat> I started listening to it and and that's when I started really getting into uh we started the M base stuff in the late mm-hmm. 80s, uh, yeah. mid 80s. Um, because I was, you know, it's, it's it's you know, instead of me trying to sound like JJ and slide, which I couldn't do anyway, I said, just try to be me. And then I tried, was, and there's a group of us that were starting to kind of come up with music, so I started connecting with music, um, that I grew up with, which was all the uh, f- funk of James Brown and that, you know, Supremes, Temptations, and Aretha Franklin, Sly and the Family Stone, and all this yeah. stuff. That, and Kool and the Gang is stuff that I loved. And then I started listening to jazz, all the all the jazz stuff with JJ and Bird and Monk and 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 Train and and trying to combine all that stuff together mm-hmm. into something that represented my life span, you know, of, of the, the age I was at that time. And, and this, that's how this, all this M bass stuff kind of came about. Cause there was a lot of mu- several musicians. There was think Greg Osby, Steve Coleman, Cassandra mm-hmm. Wilson, Jerry Allen, Terry Lynn Carrington. There's a, there's a, a group of us, uh, uh, Jimmy Cozier. And we, and we kind of um, started thinking about the music and talking about stuff at the same time, and 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 then we came up, tried to came up, come up with music that represented our generation. Mm-hmm. And instead of us trying to sound like sliding them, um, or you know, we needed to come up with something else. So right. that's that's how all that kind of organically kind of came up came about. So, so Buddhism and, and the whole M base stuff and all that stuff kind of for me just came around sprouting around the same time. Dave Holland was in it, it came in on that also. Kevin Bruce mm-hmm. Harris was playing bass, and there's, there's a, there's a, I'm sure I'm leaving some names out. Sorry, but mm-hmm. um, you know, it, but it, it was it was it felt really good to be a part of, of, a, of a group of people who were like minded and were trying to, to really do something musically that represented our lives and, and my life as opposed to me trying to sound like somebody else. I remember, I was, I've told the story a few times. I was playing with Art Blakey. We were, we went to, we were in, I think we were in Paris or somewhere in France. And, um, and we, we played and some musicians came to the concert and they invited us to a jam session. So we went there and I went there with a couple of cats who were in the band at the time. And one of the guys, we were listening to them play, and one of the guys, he said, he sounds okay, but he, he sounds like a French guy trying to trying to play jazz. Mm. Said, he is a French guy trying to play jazz. <laughs> 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 I said, what's wrong with him sounding like who he is? That's yeah, what. yeah. So, uh, you know, I was like, that's what that's what he is. He, he, he wanted him to sound like he's from 1950s Detroit. 
<laughs> right. Yeah. He, he's not. Yeah. So he should he should be honest and be who he is and and, and express himself. I think I think it's wonderful. Yeah. And, and, you know, and that's what I tell people now, you know, be, you know, find out who you are and, and do that. Don't try. And my students, I, my, my job is to help them do what they want to do. I said, don't try. I'm not trying to get you to sound like me. I don't even want you to sound like me. I want you to find out who you are. I want you to sound like you. Yeah. And and that and to me, that's my, my job is to help them express themselves better. Mm -hmm. And you know, so that and that's that's you know, it it that's it in a nutshell for mm -hmm. me. It's just really trying to, to find out who you find out who you are, and find out the best way you can express that musically if that's if that's what you want to do musically, you can, you know, you don't have to be a musician. You can do that being an artist or, you know, I don't know, being a janitor. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever yeah. You be, do. Yeah. Be right. Yeah. Was fine to, yeah. You know, fine yeah having, to having the courage to be who you're supposed to be or who you want to be. Yeah. All right. Yep. All right. And I definitely, yeah, yeah, that I think that that M bass period and just what you were saying there, where it was musical movement that you guys put together, that I don't think doesn't give enough credit. It, it doesn't get enough credit. It, I think it will his uh, later. You know, historians and mm -hmm. folks will will uh, see what was going on because I hear so many of the influences of what just became standard amongst many jazz musicians in decades later that you guys started that, you know, just some of the rhythm section stuff. And I hadn't heard those things before that. And, uh, and, and, and in a way it was also the beginning of kind of the odd, odd meter movement. Right. Cause, cause that's what Dave was. Cause we used to yeah. do that with Dave's band, which gets credit accredited with one of that stuff was Dave was doing right. a lot of stuff with us back then. So yeah, so it kind of just cross pollinated and stuff. So, it's, but yeah, you know, and then that's fine. I'm just like I said. I'm I'm trying to hear some new stuff. I'm trying. Yeah, to get, yeah. Always get it together some yeah, post -pan, post pandemic stuff. <laughs> we were right. talking about that earlier. It's yeah, like, yeah. I don't want to yeah. do stuff that's. I don't want to play. That's why I haven't put out anything recently because I'm mm. trying to get some music. I want. I need to. I want to come up with something that's going to represent the, uh, or at least my version of the. Experience collect my 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 experience of the collective experience that the whole world ex experienced during covid you know it was it was such a unique and, and hopefully hopefully singular event or phenomena and 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 and, and people are acting like nothing like it never happened yeah and, and yeah, we, and we were all definitely affected in a profound way, and it's coming, it's, it's manifesting itself in, in different things that you see in society now. But, but I, I'm trying to find a way to express that for myself musically and present that, and that's that's the stuff that I'm working on now. Nice, yeah. So, uh, so I got uh, one 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 more question or, or discussion topic. And uh, this is, it gets some people think it's controversial. I don't, I don't know. I like I said, I this is what I wrote my dissertation on in some. So I'm real I'm curious to get how you, your thoughts on this topic. But uh, so jazz as black music, or is jazz black music, and what is black music? And uh, and I, I'll I'll get your your response. I'll I'll tell you what I <laughs> that I'll, I'll say my my opinion or how I conceive of it. Uh, Cause, but, but yeah, what, what's your thoughts when people get into that discussion? How, what, what's your thoughts on that? that well, I, I definitely piece? think the roots of jazz, whatever that necessarily is, mm -hmm. that, 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 that word can be even controversial to some people, right? but um, just the black experience in, in, in America is is a, a very unique one and and the music definitely came out of that experience it was, it was i mean there's no doubt about that and um and you know through um the spirituals and 
field call hollers and all the other stuff that they the enslaved people did and um you know developing using um instruments that that uh a lot of those instruments uh had their roots in, in western and european society and those are the instruments that they had available you know and then they came up with stuff you know banjos and things other kinds of string instruments and stuff like that and the, but most of the horn stuff i assume came i think came from european yeah uh, roots and and they just kind of coalesced it and put it together and, yeah it's like post-civil war they had a bunch of there was a bunch of instruments that was left over from you know, just from from the war, from the, the, right. the mar marches and all the march <laughs> marches were such were all the rage, you know, back back then, and right. uh, and that that great merge of of blues, march, ragtime, y'all you know, putting all that together and putting yeah. that on instruments in right. New Orleans is the famous you know story goes, but uh, uh, and then yeah, and then the the history of the, the drum set that's fascinating how that, yeah, that put, 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 the, putting it together is a one, yeah yeah that one thing cr one. creativity that put that yeah. together yeah and so you know and, and then the music kind of developed through definitely through uh, through a black experience in in this in this country but i, but I think it, it's 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 been exported and um and now i think um it's 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 evolved beyond that to a degree where you know there's people play um different there are different versions of jazz like i was saying about the french guy he sounds like a french guy trying to play jazz i said he is a french guy right playing 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 expressing himself mm -hmm. so now i feel different regions of the world have have music that you I don't know if you want to use the, necessarily the word jazz, but they have a music that's jazz, definitely jazz influence that that's represents their life, you know, and and the technology has spread the music so so far, you know, back, you know, in the early 20th century or something. They they may not have uh, didn't have they may have ne never heard it before. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, no, yeah. It was until you recordings, had the, until recordings yeah, and all that yeah. kind of stuff came out. And then, you know, now you can you know, we can you can hear anything anywhere. Yeah. I mean that around the planet. Yeah, that, that blows my mind how just we're talking a hundred you know, a hundred and five years ago, I mean, because the first jazz recording that it was with the you know, original Dixieland jazz band or whatever that was and mm. I think it was nineteen eighteen. And, uh, you know, and then that that's that's a whole rabbit hole discussion in itself, talking about the, the racial dynamic. But uh, but just the, yeah, that no one could hear unless you, you had to hear it in person right. and, and be around the musician to hear any kind of music. And then all the here pops up recordings you mm -hmm. go through the 20s and by the 30s, people like recordings are oh, this is getting more normal by the 40s now it's real normal now everybody's comfortable like oh well, yeah this is just what we do we have recordings and yeah. radio is popping up and and uh yeah that I'm louis fat. louis armstrong going over to europe and around yeah. the world and really bringing being an ambassador of the music for sure and and it just you know people that heard it i mean it's it's one of the one of the greatest exports or artistic exports for sure that this country has ever produced and, yeah. and it's yeah. and it's revered i mean i'm i was i did a uh a residency at a, uh, what was a conservatory of music in antwerp in belgium mm -hmm. um uh was that last last year i think around december i guess it was somewhere and um and they're studying you know the music these people are getting college degrees studying the music of of people who didn't have you know didn't have enough money to buy <laughs> to buy right yeah buy yeah. Food. yeah yeah <laughs> and they're studying these people you know and, and and honoring them and 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 really you know 
giving them their props and, and due respect that they didn't get anything like anything in resembling respect in the in the country that they were born in and and, right. and, and where the roots of where this music came from. So they're, they're studying all these guys. I was like, I said, this is amazing. And I'm, I'm sitting back, I was just sitting back and these like, you know, 15 years, 17, I guess, 18 year olds mm-hmm. studying all this music. And I'm, you know, I'm teaching and we're putting a good, getting ready to put a concert together. And it, it just was mind blowing. I said, these, these cats was, do they know what these people went through? Who's <laughs> making this right. music? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And they know all the music. And, and I remember, well, quick well story, do they, do they study that history along with it? Do they know some of that? Or is have, it mostly they have, just. They have people teach them. I mean, I don't, I, I didn't sit in on, you know, I just told mm. them what I knew, but I don't know. I'm sure they have some like jazz history classes. Mm. I don't know what's taught in them, but, um, but they definitely have, you know, have the, the classes. So they, they, you know, and, and, and I'm sure it's, it's um they, they they can't really replicate or really understand to, to a certain degree you know it's like us reading about you know what it was like growing up in somewhere back in you know the 1800s or something yeah yeah, yeah right <laughs> you can read about it but if you weren't there you know, yeah, I, started, yeah. I was thinking about, I said, they ain't had no toilets. What are they doing? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. That's you the, the, the outhouses and, yeah, you yeah. know, yeah. That, that, that's a whole nother experience. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And, you know, so unless you are actually living in those times, it's hard, it's hard to really understand what the, the day-to-day was like. You know, you can study academically what, what the, you know, and technically, theoretically, what was happening, what they were doing musically, but you know what their lives were like and stuff like that. There was no street lights. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, no you know, all kinds, all kinds. I mean, no, no triple A. You, you're on, the, <laughs> you're on the, you're on the road in the south, and you're black, oh, yeah. and you can't you break down. Yeah, something break down. <laughs> <laughs> there's no cell phone <laughs> there's no, you know yeah that, was, that was a whole different thing yeah so i mean i mean i can't even relate to that mm-hmm. so i imagine how they can relate to it <laughs> yeah but, but you know that it, it, it's being taught to however to whatever degree it can be taught so. yeah i mean well the key word you said that i that it that I, it's important to me is respect because there is or particularly, I mean, when I meet folks in Europe and that kind of stuff, there is a there's a respect for black music and black culture or black music as black culture. It doesn't have and, and this is what I like explain in my dissertation. It doesn't have anything to do with race and the way that people assign like, oh, is that does that mean only black people? It's like, no, we're using the word as a designator in the same way you use a word like European music. It's a huge swath of music that represents a continuum of different musics. There's the European folk music can be related in some ways to the art music. And so (laughs) with black music, we're talking about, you know, music of the African diaspora, but particularly North America, there is a, a connectivity with all of the different styles. And so the story that I tell is when I was learning uh, young guy learning, they I would go and play a like, jazz jam session, but then there was elders telling me, like, man, you need to get your blues together. Go go to a blues club and just look, listen, just straight blues. So I go to the blues club and hang out, and those guys were like, hey, you ought to be getting some funk in. Like, go 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 hang out with the funk and the R&B guys. So I go hang out with them, and then there some of those guys will be in the church and they're like why don't you come come hang out with us at the at the church the gospel guys and uh so i there and there's a common language that goes through all of that now what i saw the role of the jazz musician to me was like a jedi you know like a jedi master that was synthesizing that synthesized all because that was the one person that was if that could was 
it was their responsibility. If they show up to a black church, then they're going to sound like they belong to that church or they go over here to an R&B gig or a funk gig or a blues gig or whatever, whatever the gig <laughs> is, you know, that that's part of being a jazz musician is being able to play throughout the continuum of the black musical style. Right. And so, so that's how, you know, it, 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 that's how I looked at it. And what I would see what like, to learn that, you know, I learned that by doing that, by going and being around the elders. Like they didn't teach me that in school. You know, I learned that out, you know, playing in the streets and hanging with the guys and uh, and then just kind of put that together. I was like, well, yeah, this is all, you know, this is part of the same language. It's going all the way back to, you mentioned the field hollers and the spirituals and, you know, that's going all the way back to Africa. That's the, the legacy. And, uh, and so, but what I just said is what, I don't see being taught in at least in North American schools, uh, the the ones that I, that I was around and studied. Not not enough, at least to the point where uh, sometimes I'll make the analogy. I have friends that uh, a couple friends that were really great Indian musicians, and these are you know white white guys from the United States, but they were so dedicated to that craft of wanting to learn how to be a high level music in the, you know, in Indian classical tradition, they went and immersed themselves in Indian culture. They went to India, they sat at the foot of a guru. They, in some cases got Indian wives and, you know, they immerse totally immersed themselves into that culture. And, and, and it's not looked at as weird, but when you say that about, black music that if you're regardless of where you're from you know if if you're uh studying black music go hang out with some some you know black musicians and within black spheres musical spheres and uh but that's like taboo you know you're not you're not allowed to recommend that right. or say that you know and uh but but yeah i i just yeah I, I had that 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 gripe because i just see so much potential in uh because you know, I, I enjoyed my time in studying in in school and the, such great resources. And it's kind of like if that that one little piece, if they could figure that out. And when I was doing my research, and I would read the original pedagogies that uh, David Baker created in the seventies, it's like this old found this old like documents falling apart. Nobody wants to look at it, but it was what a lot of the the uh, the programs created their pedagogies on their whole their actual degree programs are kind of based on a lot of stuff in his book. What do they leave out usually? They often leave out. He had in there survey of African American music, you know, or survey of Black music, and uh, you know, cultural. There, there was a few things in there that was, you know, go, go do a, you know, go to a Black church and and uh, like as a, like an eth ethnographic type of study, or go to these places and that was in the pedagogy in the curriculum but when you look at the ones that became the actual or actual curriculum that's that's left out that's not generally some programs have it of course <laughs> but mine didn't you know ccm that didn't they didn't even have a survey of african-american music course they might now but back then because i ended up going and teaching that a uh, survey of African American music course at uh, at another school, you know, right when I when I graduated, right. and uh, they didn't have anything like that, you know, because that was not a wasn't a priority, you know, in in the in the way the history classes were often taught was, in my opinion, it, they, it would strip away some of those those cultural dynamics that would maybe be a little controversial or discuss some of the the, the racial undertones that went into and inspired a particular period of music. It was like people were really uncomfortable to, it was almost like there was this unspoken code where you, you don't bring that up. Don't say nothing about race and uh, don't, yeah. touch, you know, just, just don't even bring yeah. that up. And, and I think uh, that's, that, that, that could be uh, more distinctly an American aspect of it. I mean, I'm sure that even if they, 
probably because it's so close to so close to home. I mean, like I was trying to wonder if they're doing that in in the uh, European, like in like in Belgium, where I was talking about mm-hmm. where they were doing it. They they can bring it up and mention it, but it's it, it doesn't strike a nerve the way if you brought it up over here. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's a different. Yeah, yeah, it's a, a different thing. Yeah, to to really study and try to understand the, you know, apartheid United States and right. the whole history and legacy of that. And, then you'd have to go into why. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But to me, that that's such an important part of of the music. You know, just the history of the music and the legacy and where it came from and the sounds of it and the, uh, you know, I mean, just. The, the furthest they'll sometimes go is they'll they maybe will mention that uh, that that Blakey and, and and the guys back back then that they were uh, was it would they say the hard bop they'll 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 talk about hard bop and this movement where black folks were getting together trying to make music in a, in relationship to the smooth smooth jazz like okay this is music that only we can make this, you know, cooking and cornbread and all this kind of, you know, mm-hmm. now that's, that's the narrative. I don't know, you know, it's, I think that, that whole, all those discussions could really use some help. And, uh, uh, but, but yeah, it's, that, that just was something that always kind of bothered me when I was in there and, uh, and, and seeing that those, those dynamics and, uh, yeah, yeah but, but also relating to what you were saying, in a, in a way, jazz music, in terms of the jazz musicians being like the Jedi's and having to synthesize all these different um, styles and, and genres and things into a cohesive kind of music. Um, my brother Kevin always talks. He he says, you know, jazz musicians can almost can almost play anything i mean right. they may not be great at every aspect of it but they you know they they can they can hang right <laughs> like, right like even like even though on like the horn players we, we had to like when i was teaching at oberlin you the all the jazz majors were required to take classical lessons right but the classical players weren't required to take jazz the lessons jazz, right so we we could you know I can get through to, to my Arbins and Brochus mm. and you know and work and do Tomasi because you know playing all the, the concertos and all this stuff, but um, you know or even if playing some some music blues music or classical music or some gospel music or you know you know and I have to do gigs playing and brass quintets. I did one. Mm. Was it, we'll call it Easter. Just passed. Mm. I did a brass quintet gig at an Easter in the church. I hadn't been been in a in a church in a long, long time. Yeah. <laughs> I was yeah. like, Mom, I, was, I I said, Mom, I'm at the church on Easter. She's like, Really? You finally? I said, Yeah, I got, <laughs> got paid really well. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, you know, but it was cool. But but you know, but you have to have the abilities to play in all these different situations and then I and I tell them especially if you're already I said you're already playing a trombone. I told the trombone said you, you're already at a disadvantage. Yeah. <laughs> right. The last thing you want to do is is limit Could limit your, yourself. Yeah. Limit the, the possibilities of you being hired. I said you got to be able to read you might just have to do a big band gig where you don't get any solos. Or you might have you get called to do a quint a small group thing where they're not, they're not gonna have any music. You gotta know know those songs, or you know you just have to be open to have the ability to do all kinds of different stuff. Yeah, and and I think j- jazz musicians have the, the, the training to really pull off um, being. Diversifying their income, put it that way, revenue, and from different different kinds of gigs and different kinds of things that a, a lot of other music tr- musicians that are trained in other styles wouldn't be able to do. Mm-hmm. Now, do you do you do a lot of uh, or, or any uh, 
you know, studio work or stuff that's kind of where you wouldn't know it was you. You're just going there and play something. Uh, not and not as not as much stay out of that. Yeah, not as much lately. But I, I mean, when I first came to New York, there was more and more. There was more of that stuff still happening. They were doing some j jingles and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, a lot of that stuff was locked up with the musicians that were doing it. But um, I, and I, I got in on some of the t tail end of that kind of stuff. And, mm -hmm. But <clears throat> but yeah, you know, but you know, you, you have to be able to do that too. They just get called in and sight read some stuff and and. Uh, you know, and make it make it sound correct. <laughs> right. Now, what about the the Broadway plays and all that kind of stuff? That I did. I did broad. I did Broadway. Yeah. For, I did. Uh, I, I used to sub on Dream Girls. Mm. When the original Dream Girls. Was, yeah, yeah. Was was that Jennifer Holiday? I get Hudson. Hudson. Yeah, was that yeah, her name? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I get. Hudson. I get. For, yeah. I get confused which one was which. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> But but it was uh, but yeah, the original cast. I was did, did, I was subbing on that, and I did this show, Tap Dance Kid, mm. <clears throat> that um, Alfonso Ribeiro and and um, Hinton Battle and uh, Savion Glover was the understudy, mm. <laughs> and uh, so I, I did Broadway for for a few years. Yeah, and um, so you had to be able to do all that stuff. And and you know I, and it was cool. I, I I didn't like doing Broadway as much, but because mm -hmm. you had to do the same thing every day, every night. Yeah, yeah. Same way. I mean, I was trying to play everything in alternate positions. Yeah. <laughs> one point, it showed a tap dance kid. I did five hundred performances in two years. And wow. yeah, I was on the back of one of the. Uh, Sheet some music of the you know every groups of five of the stick mm -hmm. blockings, and I counted it when it was like five hundred in, in two years. I mean, and I had the music memorized. I was reading my Buddhist magazine, studying and <laughs> yeah. playing, playing uh, what were we playing? Playing Scrabble with somebody with this wow. and then the sack section yeah. in front of me playing chess with the game. Yeah, <laughs> the guy behind me reading. You know, he's doing four different things at once because we had the playing three different games, reading, and then playing the parts when they came up because we had the music memorized by then. So it was it was it was crazy, but it, but it was the only it was the first time I ever played in my life where I was getting a check every week or every two weeks. Yeah. I had a tax return. I was like, wow, this is okay. <laughs> <laughs> so it definitely, you know, provides a uh, uh, a, a means of, of making a living and stuff. And there's a lot of people that only do Broadway shows, which, you mm -hmm. know, which is great. But, you know, but I was, but I felt trained doing that. I was, this was after playing in World, uh, Slides World of Trombones. Mm -hmm. So I was playing in a section with, eight trombones so when i got to play in this section actually i was subbing janice robinson who was a great trombone player <clears throat> she was playing lead trump she used to play in mel dad jones mel lewis band and she was playing a lead trombone her and steve teray were the lead trombone players when i joined when slide hired me to join the world of trombones after i met him in philadelphia and she called me to sub for her on dream girls mm. she was doing she was a regular trombonist but mm. the, the the um experience that i had playing in the world of trombones prepared me for playing in this section in the pit mm. yeah Here, being able to hear how to play in a section and blend the sound and intonation and all that stuff so so i, I felt like i was you know had a lot of training that through playing jazz music that that really um um made it possible for me to have the ability to do lots to, to work in a lot of different situations now what was your reading always good was that something that or did you have was there a period of time when you really worked on getting getting your reading together? oh yeah yeah I, I was i was always worked worked on it and i'm still working on it but, <laughs> but, but yeah but i mean you had to read that stuff slide wrote oh wow <laughs> That was some of the hardest stuff I ever had to play. Yeah. That was when I was staying with Slide. We would practice that music 
all day. Mm. He had some ensemble sections that were just so hard to play. I had never had to play anything like that before, or maybe even since. Mm. It, was just, it was hard, uh, harder than the Mingas and some of the, the Mingas. Oh yeah, stuff. yeah, de- definitely. Because wow. you know, yeah, it, yeah, because it, it's yeah, just because you know we're playing because. Yeah. By the end, I was playing those lead parts, and then the, the inner parts are even harder because yeah, they didn't even make any sense. <laughs> right, right. Harmonically, you you're like plugging in all the holes. Yeah, harmonically, yeah whatever yeah, note yeah. was needed, it's hard to get the the voice leading, so it so it sounded like its own kind of voice, mm-hmm. as opposed to going through, filling them like plugging right. in all the, all right. the holes yeah. of the notes that are missing in the chord, kind of thing. So. So it was a, it was a whole different kind of thing, but but I you know I've, I've been I've been blessed, man, no doubt, and uh, you know it's, it's really great great to have this time to to go through a lot of it with you because a lot of it I hadn't thought about in a long time, and you know seeing those videos with Dave and talking about Sun Ra and <laughs> yeah <laughs> all kinds of crazy stuff, man. all kinds of crazy Sun Ra stories too, but. But you know, it's it, but it's yeah, it's, it's been great, and, I, and there's so much more I want to do. That's the thing that's very encouraging for me. You know, even at the age I'm at now, I'm, I'm still feeling that there's a lot I want to do. I'm you know, I'm trying to get. Uh, I told you I'm trying to get a visa. I mean, I'm trying to in, in, in Belgium to get a place mm-hmm. in Brussels and spend more time in Europe, and and it's, it's a lot of opportunities over there that I'm, I I think that I, I, I'm not getting here. Mm-hmm. So I want to try to do some do some stuff over there. And I, so I'm, I'm very, very hopeful for the future and, and very appreciative of the present. Most definitely. Well, uh, how, how can everybody get a hold of you? Where where are you on the on the interwebs? Uh, um, I'm on you know Facebook and, in, and uh, Instagram and is the major social media stuff. <clears throat> I'm trying to get all, all the other stuff together. I mean, I don't even have a YouTube channel. I need to get all that stuff together. Mm. There's <clears throat> just so much stuff. I might get to get somebody to, to put all that stuff together for me because mm-hmm. I'm so busy trying to get all this everything else together and trying to get over to get over to Brussels and right. This is so much stuff going on, but but yeah, you know, um, just. It was on Instagram and uh, uh, oh. yeah, and you're and then some of those links are down below for anybody. Uh, think oh, your, okay. your website link is down below. Instagram. Oh yeah, I have a website. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I had to get I'm trying to get it develop a new new website. With new, yeah, it's like we're all, always a uh, new website. I, I remember what well, years ago when you had the. I was so impressed with the one. That uh, that was probably like the 2005 or what or something where it was, uh, I think it was red had the red background, and I think it had a red red background, and then you 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 had the like you were playing behind a green screen or something, or the the background was off and it was just you playing, and uh, might have been Metamorphosis playing in the background, but this was yeah this was a while ago. Yeah, yeah, I've had a few, and I'm, I'm definitely. Uh do for a new new remake i, I do it with a, a jazz corner with lois gilbert she yeah website so um i i gotta get a new website there's so much you know, like i said there's so much i i, I want to do right. but I, i'm very 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 um encouraged and looking forward to what's what's coming up oh i see i see you scrolling there oh wow Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to play uh, so the, uh, our parting music. I'm, I'm going to play a little clip here that I like. So this is something something newer for everybody to hear. Oh, I'm not hearing it.
That was uh, from uh, at Smoke with an Art, Art Blakey tribute. Yeah. Yeah. From that's yeah. about a, a month, about a couple of months ago. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, it's good. It's good. It's good. Good to play all that music again. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, was, I was joking. I said, I, I'm still making money, making the money Art owe me. <laughs> from back in the day yeah 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 but i had had a wonderful time playing with art too he was he was he's the one that took took me around showed me how to quote unquote be a jazz musician mm. but he I, we used to spend so much time in europe and traveling around playing with him and and uh, you know, and he made it possible for a lot of the younger musicians to get a, a foothold in the in the music business, in the jazz music business, anyway. And I mean, he's, he's people came from his band is like a who's who, almost. Yeah, everybody came through there. So. Yeah. Now, what was the, the, the was it true at the? I guess at the end, he was having trouble hearing, or his hearing was starting to. Oh, when I was playing with him, he was, had two hearing aids. Mm. But uh, I mean, one time we were playing one of the albums. I think an album called "I Get a Kick Out of Boo." Mm. It was because the song called "I Get a Kick Out of You." But mm -hmm. they said "boo" because that we used right. to call him "boo." Yeah, Hannah. boo. Right, right. And we were in the studio, and his uh, we were, and his headphones fell off. <laughs> his ear. His, he kept playing. He couldn't even hear the rest yeah. of the band, uh, at least not in the, in the headphones. So we we were just kind of following him. It was just it was just crazy how he he just plowed through. But yeah. he had his personality was so strong that all of us knew that we had we had to follow him. He was directing the band from the drums, right? So. So we would things slowed down. We would slow down and sped up. We would speed up, you know. But it was just, but that was another situation. Like I was saying before, of, of ha having a, a band, because we played, we played so much and we toured, played together so much that we we knew how to function as a unit. <clears throat> it wasn't, you know, you know, we need a trombone player for this session and you right. know, and people that you never played with before or barely knew or whatever so that's and this is something you can't beat a band right so that, and, that, and that i want i want to really i want to get a band together again now that it looks like bands are legal again <laughs> yeah play. yeah yeah you can they're not gonna right. shut us down anymore <laughs> yeah yeah I'm co yeah, finally yeah. convinced. That took me a while. Every time I thought the stuff was over, it would spike up again. And so I have a oh, yeah, new man. news news article comes out. And, yeah, it's two and a half yeah. years of the, that pandemic. So now that we're post, we're definitely post pandemic. We like I was saying, we haven't been out of it as long as we were in it yet. Yeah, but, but I'm feeling feeling confident that we can. Can push through, so I'm, I want to get some music to represent this period, for in your from my perspective, anyway. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, well, thank you so much for for being on here, man. This was a I cool really appreciate it, man. Here. It's so yeah. good to see you and 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 uh, talk with you. And thanks for bringing all this stuff up and give me a chance uh, for him to t talk about it a little bit. And, and I'm going to get back with you on the mucusless diet i need to up up my game on that and you know i'm doing i'm i'm in the ballpark i'm in the, in the vicinity but I, I can i can improve like i can at everything so yeah yeah well yeah uh, hit me up anytime on that definitely you can. and i'll get back to you on that metamorphose thing too yeah 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 <laughs> we'll have to yeah well it's had to have a session anyway soon <laughs> and uh yeah yeah monica says thank you such a beautiful conversation and uh yeah i got a great
great audience. And then again, everybody, so my, my little announcements, we got the, the book bundle, the book bundle that I sent to Robin that's on sale for 10% off for just, just till tomorrow, till tomorrow night, we got the spring, spring sale. So take advantage of that. And then I got a free training session on Tuesday at six o'clock that says 1 p.m. Change that to, <laughs> it should say 6 p.m. I changed it. So it's 6 p.m. But uh, sign up, you'll get all that information when you do so. So again, thank you all so much for tuning in. This has been wonderful. And until next time, peace, love, and breath. We are mucus free. We are mucus free. We are mucus free. We are mucus free. We are mucus free.